Right, okay, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and another episode of Testing the Tips, which has not only been uh, really popular in terms of the channel itself, but it's helped my game massively. And this is one that interests me a lot. Swing slower, but hit the ball further. That can't be a thing, can it? So I have watched multiple videos on YouTube channels. I've seen Ali Taylor do this. I've seen a video from James Robinson in recent weeks do this. And the video that I'm gonna follow for this is from Danny Maud, and it's a kind of like, that's the one I can make more logic of. And I'm gonna see whether or not it works for me. Do I hit the ball further if I swing the club slower? I'll explain how we're gonna interpret Danny's video. And like I said, the key important bit to remember at this point is it's my interpretation of this. And if you want full explanations from PGA professionals, and I'll put the link below from Danny, Ali, and James's video, make sure you check them out and subscribe to their channels. But like I said, this video is about how I interpret what Danny Moore says and how one, two, and pivot through will be something that gets ingrained into your brain. Okay, so it's one and pivot through that's a decent ball you know you try that again one two, pivot through it's right on line again this you know towering ball flight lofty club in hand oh we're green again Right, so in each of those three videos, they all talk about swinging slower. And yes, ultimately you do swing slower. But for me, it's more about sequencing. And they also do talk about that as well. And when I talk about sequencing, what I would refer to is that, generally speaking, as average golfers, if we're not playing very well, what we generally do is a complete opposite to what we should do. We all get a bit quicker. Confidence is low. We get to the top of the backswing and all we want to do is get down and whack that golf ball. We know it's wrong, but we still can't help ourselves in doing it. And we're trying to slow down. But as you know, you play your best golf when you're in a rhythm. Your tempo's good. Everything's nice and easy. And the game does just feels fantastic. It can't go wrong. And when it does go wrong, like I said, we're erratic. And for me, the swinging slower element is, yes, we've got to swing slower. But it's getting a sequence put together. And why I've concentrated on Danny Maud's sequence, if you like, on how we understand what we're doing get that tempo down, swing with more control and hit the ball, not necessarily further, but with more control and just as far as we do if we're a little bit erratic. So I'm gonna hit my first ball, we've got Trackman plugged in and I'm gonna give it a bit of a, a, bit of a hit. Like I said, well, no concentration on our kind of like, it wasn't a bad strike, it was okay. What we got there, 78.5 mile an hour club head speed, ball speed of 100, only carried 131 it launched low at 13 and a half degrees i've got a traditional seven iron in hand here by the way so there's a 34 or 35 degree seven iron i think this is so you can see from those numbers there don't forget the one to, to keep an eye on is 78.5 mile an hour club head speed and a 131 carry that was me swinging i wouldn't say erratically but certainly with no control if you like no thought to any emphasis on tempo so the next thing we've got to do is the drill in which Danny gives us to look at getting some, I think it's all about just getting some tempo and that sequence into your golf swing. And this kind of one, two and pivot through is fantastic. I can't get it off my sort of brain at the moment. It's ingrained for this last couple of hours since I've been trying it. So first of all, it's about the transfer of weight from your front foot to your back foot, not a sway, just a transfer of weight. So it's it's a kind of, the first thing is one and two. And all he asks us to do is move the transfer of weight from front foot and then back again. So it's just a one and two, one and two. And that's all we're doing. Moving from one to the other, one and two. Then you just keep on, keep on practicing those swings. It just feels really easy, one and then two. So it's like, the way I feel it is kind of a bit of a push off with this one and then a push off with my right foot back through. So it's one and two. I'm not caring about where I am in terms of my backswing or follow through. All I'm doing is tempo from the front to back and it's simple counting a one and a two motion. That's all you're doing. And if I hit a golf ball with my kind of one and two motion, first of all, one and two. We just try that. So one and two. 
What it does for me is it's just a nice rhythm, there's a nice tempo, I'm able to feel as though the club, the, the other thing he talks about, and again, I perhaps slightly uh, forgot to mention there, is letting sort of feeling the club, uh, the weight of the club, the head, if you like, and letting that sort of follow through in that whole sort of transference of weight, that one and two, and it's all about that rhythm and letting the club head just swing its way through naturally. You're not doing anything, you're not trying to force it, you're not dragging it any sooner. I'm not concentrating on anything else right now apart from the weight of the club head and just letting it follow through. And all we're doing there, like I said, you can see from the practice swing that I hit, and I'm going to hit one more, it just becomes nice and controlled and it's about one and two. You can feel that club head, just let the club head one and two. It's just dead easy, just a nice simple swing. We've got no, no effort going in there, we're not looking at distance right now, it's just about controlling that club head, one and two. And honestly, just this morning, first thing on a Monday morning this, just building up a little bit of tempo, a little bit of rhythm, just a great little warm-up routine if nothing else, because like I said, all it does, it just gets you into a nice rhythm. And then when you want to build and add to that, well then, by all means, as you would do in a round, you're ready for the first tee, but what a great warm-up routine, first of all. But it doesn't end there, because one and two are just the first two motions. And if you remember when I said about getting something ingrained in your brain, it's that one, two, and pivot through. Which, Danny, I think you should consider putting a trademark on that little saying, because it really is, well, it's really clever in my mind, because, uh, like I said, it's a nice little, nice little rhyme that resonates in the brain straight away. It gets locked in, you can't forget one. It's a nice and easy one. But the pivot through is the interesting bit. And again, this is where I would say, Go and look at Danny's video for probably a better explanation than I'm going to give you right now. And, um, but my interpretation of it is this. So you've got one and two. That was easy enough. The pivot through is just, lit, to me, dropping down a little bit into the shot. So a bit of your sort of energy, if you like, transferred into the floor when you come into impact. And the pivot through and then pushing off. So again, for me, and again, your interpretation might be different. It was coming down, just dropping down into the shot a little bit, and then coming back up. So the pivot through was, so it, it, in, in a swing for me, it'd be one, two, and pivot through. And you've just got that little bit of energy that's then added into the shot. And I think that makes the key difference to where we've got swing slower, so nothing's changed in terms of tempo, but that pivot through is all of a sudden there's getting a bit of energy from the floor exploding into the shot if you like and that follow through is where you're not losing out in terms of um, in terms of distance so if I try and adopt my one two and pivot through didn't get that right that time one two pivot through let's give that one a go so one two and pivot through now all of a sudden we've got a different shot we've still swinging slower as you can see from club head speed but look at the difference in carry we've almost gained what is that now we've almost gained 14 yards of carry and yet our swing speed is lower so yeah the idea is we're swinging slower i'm gonna hit another ball while i'm talking away the idea is yeah of course we're swinging slower granted we've lost what was it almost yeah, a couple of mile an hour two or three mile an hour in terms of swing speed club head speed but we've gained in yardage so it wasn't just because we swung slower though we swung slower on a previous shot like i said and just one and two in itself becomes just a little bit it's body and arms yeah you've got a little bit of rotation in there so you are getting generating a little bit of power but the key to it and remaining in the distance is the one two and then that pivot through and that's the bit where like i said just that little drop down into the floor but making sure you're, then you're pushing back off that floor and exploding into a little bit is where that yardage comes from. Now I can't do it without sort of counting in my head, one, two, and pivot through. Obviously you can't say that out loud, you look a bit of a burke on the golf course, but trust me, if you just get that ingrained in the brain, it's, I say that on every video we've done, and uh, Hannah is behind the camera here this morning and we were sort of amazed when we I was a bit skeptical about this one more so than others because the kind of swing slower hit it further it doesn't make any sense does it there's a lot of it that doesn't make any sense but like I said it's about making sure that you can get that sequence right and when I referenced Hannah behind the camera is we were amazed both of us 
when we just came in, first thing this morning I did the 1-2 was a bit of a warm up like I said, and then all of a sudden we've got a yellow flag here out in the distance that we're looking to. Yes, we've got Trackman to tell us where it's going, but it was literally just peppering the, peppering the flag, which is something, and very, very straight as well. So 1-2, and I literally messed that one up and stayed too low. Which again, you know, these aren't, these aren't magic fixes that just, I literally picked this up a couple of hours ago. You're not all of a sudden going to pick it up and be away with it. This is something you're going to need to practice. And like I said, concentrate on, but I firmly believe one, it's just that little bit of release. I felt I stayed a bit low. So one, oh, what a ball that is. What a shot that is. I mean, I would, it's, it's everything, like I said, in these videos that have been good so far, is that I'm an average golfer. I come in here sometimes on a Monday morning, we're all over the place. So this kind of drill is fantastic, first of all, like I said, as a warm-up routine to get that tempo going. And I think all you would do is continue to practice that motion, that one, two, and pivot through. And all you would do, I would think, my guess is that over time, if you continue to sort of work on that, uh, then you, you can get quicker with it. So right now, for me to do it, the kind of one, two pivot through, it's all very controlled. It's a 77, 78 mile an hour club head uh, speed. But I would imagine that if I can, I can still work on that, I can increase that club head speed, but it's important to maintain that control. Otherwise, we're back where we started and it's all become a little erratic. Anyway, the point is, um, I hope you enjoy this series as much as I am because Again, I keep referring to Hannah who's behind the camera. We're in my own personal game in some of these routines that we've tried, it's been a real big difference. Whether I can take that out onto a golf course, well, that remains to be seen. It's all right doing it in here. It's all right doing it when there's no pressure on. But if I can take that onto the golf course, I genuinely believe it's made a real big difference to the way I've been hitting the club so far in these short sort of five, six tips is it we've done so far, whatever we're in so far. But they've all been well worth a watch. So as ever, thank you for watching. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you don't to the channel already. Let me know what you think of this uh, video. You have probably may have tried it yourself, so by all means, again, give me some feedback, which has been great so far, because I've seen people who've gone away, tried the tip, and then came back and said, in the, and I haven't actually seen some negativity. Everybody, what we've put out so far, have come back and said, wow, this actually does work. So I'm glad to see that. And I do reckon that this will be something else that will be well worth a try. Give it a go, come back and comment. Thank you for watching uh, and the encouragement we've had for this series so far. We'll keep them coming. I'm going to keep on trying these tips and we'll keep relaying them back to you and uh, hope you keep on watching. Right, I'll see you soon. I'm about to practice my one, two and pivot through.